Kathleen Turner has made a career of playing characters who are a bit ballsy. You're not too smart, are you? <laughs> I like that in a man. And sometimes not that likable. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you all right? Yeah. Ah! But as steely as she can be on screen and on stage, Kathleen has had to be even tougher in her own life. Her father died when she was just 17, and although he never approved of her desire to be an actress, Kathleen barreled ahead, cut her teeth on a soap opera, then made her unforgettable big screen debut. You've been pretty friendly. As a ruthless femme fatale in body heat. Now leave me alone. What followed were some movie golden years for Kathleen. Hits. Golden Globes, and an Academy Award nomination. Aren't you Peggy Sue Kelcher? I was once. But in 1993, she was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which is a crippling disease that savages the joints. The steroids she took to control the pain caused her to gain weight, and the tabloids went for the jugular. She turned to booze to help ease the pain in her joints, and after a stint in rehab and some new medication, she made her triumphant return to Broadway, playing a boozy, broken woman in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Years earlier, Kathleen had made an important decision. Given that Hollywood has very little time for women over 40 who aren't named Meryl, she would focus her energies more on the theater. She bared all on stage in The Graduate, and now she's bearing her soul as a nun counseling a teenage meth addict in a gritty drama called High. Please welcome to the show, Kathleen Turner. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming to the show. It's a pleasure. She's back. What it, Ruth? Oh, I do like live audiences. It is, it is fun, isn't it? Well, I mean, you're getting, oh, yeah. you get that with theater now all the time, don't you? Well, that's my love. Is it because it's nice to get the validation instantly or something else? It's because it's the most alive you can feel when you're acting. Because every moment that you're up there, you're breathing along with other people and thoughts are flying and emotions are changing and you know it will only happen this one time. Right. And that's fantastic. Do you have anxiety about screwing it up up there? Do you have those moments? Only before I get on stage. As soon as they let me out there, I'm good. Previous to this stuff, would you characterize yourself as a woman of religious faith? Would you, hmm. would you have done that to yourself? Not any organized religion, never. No. But I wondered if, if um, to get into the headspace of a character, mm -hmm. it, what you had to learn about the essence of faith to, to be okay, true. Now, now, faith. I believe in. Right. Faith, I understand. I imagine that's your window into these characters. I, I think that the ability to believe and the will to believe and heavens, you know, I mean, honest to gosh, if, if I thought we were the be-all and end-all, if there was nothing better than us out there, it would be quite discouraging. You mean as a human? I, as, a, as a human, I do mean that. But I don't, I cannot really agree with, with organized religion that says that this is the only way there is no other, and if you do anything else, you're wrong. Right. That's I don't buy that. The idea of, of faith works for you, and I suppose that's how you could pull these characters off. Faith in what, though? Faith in something greater than ourselves. Uh, I'm not sure there's a personification. I think, you know, sometimes uh, the great miracle is the fact that you could still be friends with your ex, right? Oh, I don't think that's a miracle at all. We share a child. Yeah. Joe, we have a wonderful daughter. Oh, that's nice. Uh, who is a singer-songwriter, has just released her first album. Lord, was I nervous. About, which, about the album? Well, because I'm, you, you know, as, as, as much as I may be a doting mother, uh, I, I'm, an, I'm a professional who really cannot lie. And if it, <laughs> if it wasn't good, I was terrified. Yeah. Um, no, she, she, she didn't want to listen to it with me. How is an actor bad at lying? <laughs> But you see, that's the, that's the, the better actor I become, the worse liar I become. <laughs> no, it's quite true. I, I'm also going to be, you know, 58 soon, and what language can we use on this show? You say whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like well, I can certainly say that I'm too old to work with assholes anymore. <laughs> and I've decided, you know, <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> Preach on. Preach on. Because life does get much shorter <laughs> the older you get. Well, heavens, I, well, the, also the, the truth is that you've worked with enough people and, and, and covered enough ground and explored so many ideas and, and personalities, some marvelous, some, some not, uh, that I suppose I, I don't, I am not at all cynical. I could never, I don't think, be. 
cynical, but certainly experience gives you enough background that you can say, this is important, this I have, you know, I could care less. Did you say once, I mean, I like your idea of, you know, a no-asshole policy and, you know, you seem to be in a mm -hmm. good place. Did I once read that you said that you were just an angry person by nature and that that's what drove most of your choices? Well, I'm afraid that's rather true. Is it still true? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I am angry. I'm angry at, at people not doing the right thing. I'm angry at the fact that one takes advantage of others to their harm. Uh, I'm angry at intolerance. I'm angry at inequality. I'm angry at women being treated as lesser human beings. Um, Which happens. Yeah, to we can go on and on here, you know? Well, that's, that's a good anger to have, right? Well, what do you think that, I mean, there's a back mentor in Canada who recently brought it up that they wanted to explore the idea of when a fetus becomes a life, and I know that with the Republican race going on, that, that conversation, mm. and you know, next year is gonna be the, the anniversary of Roe versus Wade. Well, so as an American citizen visiting Canada, thank you very much, uh, I have been chairman of the Board of Advocates for Planned Parenthood for about 18 years. And to me, any, any refusal to allow a woman to choose whatever decision she may make, whatever my opinion or anyone else's, to say you may not have choice is uh, intolerable. And I am hoping very, very much that given our American primaries, the Republican primaries that have been, that have now ended essentially, you know, with, with um, the emergence of, of Romney as, as a top candidate. But what was said and, and the attacks on women and on women's health that was um, allowed and even encouraged during the primary season, I am desperately hoping we will keep women aware of until the election because you know perfectly well that, you know, by August, the Republican Party is going to be saying, oh no, we love women. You know, and uh, I have put together a one-woman play that I have been performing in other places, I, in Los Angeles and Philadelphia. And so my goal has been to take it to Washington, D.C. for September and October so that I can just shove this in their faces right up until the election. <laughs> this is your version of advocacy, right? Pull that yeah, across. it's one of them. How's your health these days? Because you, you, you had a tough remission, run. Which is a wonderful thing. I have had uh, rheumatoid arthritis for many years, and it's, you know, I'm about 12 operations and replacements later. I have a lot of metal in me. <laughs> you really don't want to go to the airport with me. <laughs> no. Boy, am I sick of being patted down. And people, you know, saying to me, Do you know, I just have to touch you here. I, you know, can I have an autograph? I'm going to really? use the back of my hand. May I use the autograph? Yes. <laughs> and you say, I'm so glad you like my work. Stop touching me. I, uh, <laughs> is it wrong that I choose the pat down all the time? Is that wrong? The yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it must be an interesting position, especially because you, you did a lot of your stunts. You're very physical in your oh. films, uh, something like Body Heat for sure, sexual. Uh, and then when you have to battle your own body, what was that psychological <sighs> journey like for you? The extraordinary thing was I, I, uh, my confidence was devastated. I had never quite realized how much I depended on my ability to just move as I wished to as part of my sense of self, as part of my, you know, my, 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 well, my confidence. When I couldn't get up and down stairs, when they told me I would be in a wheelchair for my life. You were young when this happened, right? I was 37, 38, yeah. About 38, yeah. Um, I, my, my first thought, my worst thought was, well, who am I? I mean, if I can't, if I can't tell my body to leap over there now, then I wasn't sure who I was, and, and suddenly I had to rethink what I based myself worth in, in terms of was it my mind? Was it my, you know, my ability to communicate or, or simply my ability to move? So I kind of had to rebuild a lot of 
my image to myself. When you started to read some of the reaction, because the chemotherapy put you in a different physical uh, reality. Pretty tough. People said that you, they just thought it was because you were boozing. That was the reason. Oh, yeah. you were How did that make you feel? Yeah. Well, the truth is that, that this autoimmune disease, and 20 years ago, we really knew very, very little about it, and we didn't have the medications that we have now. So it frightened people a lot. The truth was an insurance company would hire a known drunk or drug addict and insure them, but not someone with a, with a disease they didn't understand. So if I wanted to do any work at all, I had to keep that um, a secret, which is pretty tough. Incredibly yeah. difficult. Stick around. More conversation with Kathleen Turner, including anthropology. We'll be right back. Afternoons, a time to share with the doctors. She said she's just not sure if it's Collins or if it's Jason's. Aren't there drugs that can be used to induce labor? Well, of course, but... Uh... No, well, your whole life at this point is a lie. The Doctors, weekdays on NBC. That's awesome. That's amazing. It was great. It was great. That was one of my very, very first jobs when I first came to New York. Uh, that was the, the first think, year, right? yeah, the first year I came in '78. I got the first year I got off off Broadway play, and then I got the Doctors, and then I got a Broadway play. So I was going to the studio at, you know, 6:30 every morning, and then going to the theater at 6:30 every evening. But you know, I was 22. I could do that then. This uh, this um, story high is interesting because it's Ooh. about connecting uh, to addiction and the yeah. idea of redemption. What's your relationship like with redemption? Ah, I, redemption is a tricky word. Uh, redemption is a process, not an answer. Uh, I don't believe there is a cure per se. I don't believe that one, you know, finds God or finds some kind of salvation. And all the problems that led up to addiction and the destruction that went along with that are solved or finished. I don't think it works like that. Who's somebody that you'd like to say sorry to and why? I think I'd have to say sorry, honestly, to my mother, that I have not valued her enough. She's an extraordinary woman. When did you realize this, that you didn't value her enough? When um, she wrote me a letter of apology for not valuing me enough. <laughs> Is that a lovely sort of circle? So. That's a heavy circle. Yeah, to be yeah, in. yeah. When you read that, it was, letter, what was that? Was she in the room? Huh? No, no. It happened that when I was in college and university, my older sister was getting her doctorate in urban sociology and city planning. Mm -hmm. My older brother was getting his doctorate in psychology and hospital administration. Uh, my younger brother went on to get a, a doctorate in government administration. I was getting my BFA in acting, though I have since achieved a doctorate of my own in literature. Right. However, at the time, my mother said to me that my siblings were all working toward things that would be of benefit to, man, to other people, to society and to the world. And all I was doing was being selfish and thinking about myself, do you know? And I said, if I manage to do the work that I hope to do, I think I will help more people than they will ever meet or know. So years later, she wrote me a letter and said, you were right. Was it Jessica Rabbit that made her think that? No. <laughs> <laughs> because that was Nobody to... was close, yeah. <laughs> it was very close. Yeah. The play is called High. Uh, it runs at the Royal Alex here in Toronto. It runs until May 13th, so go check it out if you can. Kathleen Turner, everybody, we'll be right back. <laughs> Kathleen Turner has made a career of playing characters who are a bit ballsy. You're not too smart, are you? <laughs> I like that in a man. And sometimes not that likable. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you all right? Yeah. But as steely as she can be on screen and on stage, Kathleen 
has had to be even tougher in her own life. Her father died when she was just 17, and although he never approved of her desire to be an actress, Kathleen barreled ahead, cut her teeth, tabloids went for the jugular. She turned to booze to help ease the pain in her joints, and after a stint in rehab and some new medication, she made her triumphant return to Broadway, playing a boozy, broken woman in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Years earlier, Kathleen had made an important decision. Given that Hollywood has very little time for women over 40 who aren't named Meryl, she would focus her energies more on the theater. She bared all on stage in The Graduate, and now she's bearing her soul as a nun counseling a teenage meth addict in a gritty drama called High. On a soap opera that made her unforgettable big screen debut. You've been pretty friendly. As a ruthless femme fatale in body heat. Now leave me alone. What followed were some movie golden years for Kathleen. Hits. Golden Globes and an Academy Award nomination. Aren't you Peggy Sue Kelcher? I was once. But in 1993, she was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, which is a crippling disease that savages the joints. The steroids she took to control the pain caused her to gain weight and the time. Please welcome to the show, Kathleen Turner. All right, thank you. Thanks for coming to the show. It's a pleasure. She's back. What a group. Oh, I do like live audiences. It is, it is fun, isn't it? Well, I mean, you're getting, oh, yeah. you get that with theater now all the time, don't you? Well, that's my love. Is it because it's nice to get the validation instantly or something else? It's because it's the most alive you can feel when you're acting. Because every moment that you're up there, you're breathing along with other people and thoughts are flying and emotions are changing and you know it will only happen this one time. Right. And that's fantastic. Do you have anxiety about screwing it up up there? Do you have those moments? Only before I get on stage. As soon as they let me out there, I'm good. Previous to this stuff, would you characterize yourself as a woman of religious faith? Would you, mm. would you have done that to yourself?